Okay, in this notebook I explain the construction of phylogenetic trees um, and um, I explain, start a bit explain the background and then I um, show a very simple algorithm to do so and um, we also uh, give an intuition um, why, why this um, works. So um, let's start with the, with the background. So um, the input of our problem is um, is a binary matrix like depicted here, and each row uh, each row um, represents a, a taxon. Um, such a taxon could be a species, uh, could be an individual, could be a specific um, gene. And um, each column indicates uh, if uh, in each column is a so-called character, and the character can be anything like a snip or any any um, um, any um, characteristic of a, of a species, like also tandem repeats, for example. And then the um, and then we say. Uh, uh, a taxon possesses a character when uh, when we write when when there is a one written in the corresponding row and column, and um, um, so here, for example, we can say the first taxon has the second um, character. The second taxon has all characters except of the third one, and um, so on. Um, we also assume that there's um, that these taxa have a common ancestor, um, and uh, without loss of generality in this notebook, we assume that that these common ancestor is the all zero um, zero vector, meaning that the common ancestor has none of the none of the characters. Um, we also make the assumption that um, these characters mute. Uh, mutate very rarely, meaning that um, we assume that um, each character only mutates only one time in the in the history or in the evolution of the of the taxa. Um, then um, a bit about the notation. So capital M will always um, denote the um, uh, the input matrix. Um, the, the rows, the taxa, the columns, the, the characters. I use small m when I'm um, in, in the code. Um, when we need a, a symbol for a phylogenetic tree, we use capital T. And um, instead of, of writing the vector um, 0, 0,1, I just abbreviate that to 0, 0,1. Um, so then um, we come to the to the formal problem that we're trying to solve. So we're, we're given this input matrix of n tux and m characters, and the problem is to determine if there exists a perfect phylogeny for that input matrix, and if it exists, um, to to construct it. And um, the uh, the perfect phylogeny is defined as follows. So um, for for an um, n times n binary matrix of, of n taxa, we say um, uh, we say a perfect phylogeny is a rooted directed tree with um, n leaves, meaning um, uh, the same number as, as we have taxa, we have leaves, um, which satisfy first that each taxa, um, each of the taxons labels exactly one leaf, each of the characters label it's exactly one edge and for each um, taxons the um, each taxon f the characters that we find on the edges on the path from the root node to the leaf um, labeled with that taxon um, fully specify the, the characters that this um, taxon possess so let's look here on a small example. We have here um, a matrix with three taxa and three characters. Then we would say, okay, our um, um, the root is the, the all zero sequence. 
then we have a labeled edge to the state uh, to the yeah taxon one zero zero and we label that edge with one because the first component um, the first character changes here mutates um, then we have um, an edge labeled with two and one labeled with um, three so the the labels of the of the edges always correspond to the characters that change and then additionally we insert for each of this um, and for each of the taxa in the matrix, um, we insert a leaf node so that we have exactly um, three leaves as um, as um, told in the in the theorem. And we also um, note that the the edges to the to the leaves um, are not labeled, and that the lab and that the leaf nodes, the labels of the leaf nodes appear. In the leaves, but also one time in the inner node, so two times each. This is not uh, contradicting the um, contradicting the the properties here because we just told each of the taxa labels exactly one leaf. It doesn't exclude that it also labels some of the inner nodes. Um, then we make make a few like simplifying assumptions um, for um, first that. Um, none of the that we don't have any two species that exhibit exactly the same um, characters, meaning we don't have duplicate rows. Also, that none of the characters occurs in exactly the same set of taxa, so all the comments, columns are, ident are, um, are distinct from each other. Um, so um, here's a small function in Julia, how we can can test that. Um, so we we um, go over the set of all um, columns and um, we may we um, construct the, the set of that and that uh, when this set has the same cardinality as the the number of, of columns, then um, all columns must be distinct. And um, <coughs> Then, um, then we we come to the uh, yeah we, we come to the uh, um, we we come to the um, yeah let's say most most important um, theme for the construction of these phylogenetic trees. Um, this is the, the perfect phylogeny theorem, and it's sort of a, a assumption of the four gametes. Um, it's sort of a variant of the four gametes theorem for, for a special case when we know the root sequence, just as a remark. Um, so the um, the perfect phylogeny theorem says um, the matrix M allows for a perfect phylogeny if and only if, if not, none of the no, for no pairs of columns, um, um, these three um, these um, three pairs exist, meaning that we don't have um, we don't have a character a taxon that only we don't have have in the same time a taxon that only um, possesses one, the second character. And one that only possesses the first one, and then in the same time also one taxon that possesses both of them. This is is not possible. Um, <coughs> let's look here at a small example. So um, we have here have here um, input matrix with just two characters and three three taxa, and um, we see that we have one 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 zero and one um, uh, zero one and one zero. So according to the theorem, there shouldn't be um, shouldn't be um, a perfect um, perfect phylogeny theorem. And then um, indeed, when we um, <coughs> indeed when we um, look, um, um, look when we try to um, construct such a phylogeny tree, we, we would start by looking at the root sequence and then. Um, and then, of course, we need nodes um, 0, 1, and 1, 0. And um, we could, um, and uh, since both of them need to, yeah, sort of exist, we need, we need two labeled edges. 
um, one where the second character changes and one where the first character changes. But then we have the problem that we used already both two, two edge, the two labels and we cannot insert anymore another edge with the label one or two because of this assumption of the infinite side model that each character only mutates one time in the history of the of the taxa so um, in other words if a, uh, if, if a pair of column contains the contains um, these three pairs then um, one of the two characters need to change two times um, which is impossible so from sort of this simple um, case we we can get the intuition um, why um, why this is a, a necessary condition that um, that in none of the pairs of columns these three um, combinations appear um, then it's the question um, why is it a sufficient condition why why can we construct a phylogenetic tree when um, uh, when this condition um, when this condition of the of the theorem holds and in order to see that we we um, um, we construct an algorithm that actually um, computes us in that situation um, um, the phylogenetic tree um, before that let's briefly see how um, how we would um, check uh, um, check in Julia um, that our matrix satisfies this property so first let's let's see if two columns if columns are compatible meaning that they don't have these three pairs so for this um, we, we have this small function here where we um, again um, compare the two um, uh, the two columns of, of interest um, and um, we zip them and then we form the set of that and when this um, so resulting set is different than um, in the set of these three combinations that was in the theorem mentioned, then um, <coughs> then we are fine. Um, and um, then to, to see if if we have a phylogenetic tree, we can um, now use that function by going over all um, combinations of of um, columns, all all pairs, and um, <coughs> And we um, and we can um, then for each of the pairs we um, um, we, we check if, if they are compatible and then we reduce them with the um, logical conjunction. So also note that um, these are iterators and in Julia they are lazily evaluated. So this sort of um, sort of um, is also efficient. Mm. Next um, um, we come now to the to the yeah actual algorithm for the construction of the tree. So um, mm, before um, before that we make a small assumption on the matrix and that assumption is that we assume that um, the characters in the matrix are ordered in a specific way. Uh, meaning that the um, most frequent characters um, appear on the very left of the input matrix and then the more rare um, or rare characters appear on the on the very right of the um, input function um, that is uh, not a problem to make such assumptions since we always can just um, relabel shuffle the uh, the columns of, of the of the input matrix and this is not really changing the result of the, the algorithm of course. Um, so let's check how this can be done in Julia. So we would um, we have a function sort slices an inbuilt function and we need to, to tell this function that we want to sort the, the columns. Um, then we need to say that we want to um, sort them in descending order and then we need to, to specify um, specify an operator to compare two columns and for this we, we use um, we say that column x is smaller than column y when when the number of ones is um, 
less than the number of ones of the column y.